Uh, good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today is Wednesday, the 12th of August, and it's a hot day, and the days have been hot, I know, and so are the nights, and I know. But may God give us some sort of relief from this heat and, um, and, and, and rest, despite the heat as well. But for those of you who don't like the heat, don't worry, winter is coming. <laughs> we'll be cold again soon. It won't last too long. It's only five days. Anyway, let's, um, let's get to prayer and commit this night to our Lord. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress, and my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice in his temple, and my cry came to his ears. He parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He, he came flying on the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his covering round about him, dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the darkness of his presence, through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. For you will save a lowly people and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle. The Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is the shield to all who trust in him. And that psalm is from Psalm 18. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our collect for this evening. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, Bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages, and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our evening confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders, Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And our psalm for this evening. Our psalm is Psalm 59, Psalm 59. Deliver me from my enemies, O God. 
Be my fortress against those who are attacking me. Deliver me from evildoers and save me from those who are after my blood. See how they lie in wait for me. Fierce men conspire against me for, for no offense or sin of mine, O Lord. I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Arise to help me. Look on my plight. You, Lord God Almighty, you who are the God of Israel, arouse yourself to punish all the nations. Show no mercy to wicked traitors. They return at evening, snarling like dogs and prowl about the city. See what they spew from their mouths. The words from their lips are sharp as swords. and They think, who can hear us? But you laugh at them, Lord. You scoff at all those nations. You are my strength. I watch for you. You, God, are my fortress. My God, on whom I can rely. God will go before me and will let me, and will let me gloat over those who slander me. But do not kill them, Lord, our shield or my pe pe people will forget. In your might, uproot them and bring them down. For the sins of their mouths, for the words of their lips, let them be caught in their pride, for the curses and lies they utter. Consume them in your wrath, consume them till they are no more. Then it will be known to the ends of the earth that God rules over Jacob. They return at evening, snarling like dogs, and prowl about the city. They wander about for food and howl if not satisfied. But I will sing of your strength. In the morning I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. You are my strength. I will sing praise to you, God are my fortress. You, God, are my fortress, my God, on whom I can rely. Amen. Amen. Despite, despite the psalmist's lament about those who are trying to harm him, those who are trying to destroy him, those who are, uh, and, and, and notice what they're using to destroy him, it's their words, the things that are coming out of their mouth, those are the things that the psalmist fear from these people who are seeking to harm him. But despite all that, his strength is in God. You are my strength, verse 17. I sing praise to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God on whom I can rely. Amen. So uh, Keller's commentary on the first seven verses, he calls it spewing. Today's media make it easier than ever to spew words sharp as swords in verse 7. Unlike in writing letters, we dash emails and text messages off without weighing them. Unlike in face-to-face -face confrontation, we blurt things out without fear, of, without fear of seeing the hurt or hunger in the other person's face. Because of anonymity, we think we can, we think no one can identify us. Words are thus more weaponized now than in David's day. But every word, even an off-handed careless one, says Jesus, is an indicator of what is in the heart and will be judged by God. More often than ever, we are saying, I don't really mean what I said, but you did. Watch and control words to know and shape your heart. Amen. Yes, uh, uh, that's good. Tim brings out this from the psalmist, that words are the weapons of these people that are hurting David, the psalmist here. And, and, and he's bringing the point that today in our day, uh, people 
you know, we talk about trolls on the internet or on Twitter and so forth. People who write things that are just mean and horrible to other people. And many of those people, they wouldn't say these things in person, but they, it's easy for them to throw the words out on the media um, and without thinking about what they're saying, without weighing the cost. And as, as, as Tim says, they become it, it's, it's anonymous. And, and because it's anonymous, they don't get to see the face of the person they are hurting. They don't see the reaction. They don't see the, the, the hurt because for them, it's just a faceless machine that, they've, that they're using and, 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 and using words, spew words like sharp as swords in verse seven from their mouths. But to watch what we say, be careful of our words. Uh, they hurt more than sticks and stones sometimes. And so we need to have the right words to say, watch and control your words to know and shape your heart. Lord, save me from the sins of my tongue and the flaws of character that fuel them. Make my words honest by taking away my fear. Few by taking away my self-importance. Wise by taking away my thoughtlessness and kind by taking away my indifference and irritability. Amen. Amen. It's a good prayer, actually. Very good. Okay. Uh, our evening New Testament reading is from Mark's Gospel. In Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 1, we're in Mark chapter 1, and from verse 21, to 28. Mark 1, 21. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in, his, in their synagogue who was, a, who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Right, so here we have Jesus again. We, we remember Mark is a reporter, so he's only giving snip, snippets. He's not going into great detail. He's giving as, uh, just um, uh, the headlines, as it were, of the story. So we are told they went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to preach. And the people were amazed at his preaching. We know what he preached in Luke. We know he went in there and Luke gives us a little bit more information. You see, a bit of the sermon, actually. We are not told what the sermon is here in Mark. Mark is not too interested in that. Mark is concerned about what he did and the reaction of the people. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. What does that mean? It means that Jesus taught by, 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 from his own authority. You see, when the rabbis taught, they would quote another authority. They would quote another rabbi as an authority. They would quote the Mishnah or the Torah or the Talmud or some form of Jewish authority. But Jesus quoted himself as an authority. For Jesus, he was the authority. And this is the thing that amazes people. Here is one who, 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 who comes to teach us 
but he doesn't teach us in the name of somebody else. He's his own teacher. He teaches us in his own name. He teaches us with his own authority. And we are told that a man with an impure spirit came into the, uh, the synagogue. There's then a man in their synagogue who was possessed, cried out. Um, it seems he was already in there. But somehow, something about Jesus brought out the spirit in him to cry out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. Jesus told him to be quiet and, and expelled the demon from the man, the impure spirit or unclean spirit, which is a demon, a demonic influence. And, and of course, here you have a demon who recognized Jesus. I always say it's fascinating that human beings don't recognize who Jesus is, but demons do, and demons know him. Demons know him and they tremble. They are afraid of him. And human beings see him and they don't even recognize who he is. But that's the nature of our, our, of our sinful hearts. Um, Jesus healed this man of this impure spirit. But again, the, 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 what Mark is interested in is the reaction of the people. Look, the people were all so amazed that they were asked, what is this? What new teaching? And with authority even. So he speaks with authority and he casts out demons with authority, with his own authority. Notice, this is a point. Jesus doesn't appeal to any other authority. Jesus doesn't say, in the name of God, come out. Jesus say, I command you to come out. I have the authority. And this is what amazes the people, that here is a man, a rabbi in their midst with his own authority. And he doesn't, he, his authority is not derived from somewhere. It's intrinsic to him. He teaches as if he, he's teaching about himself. And he did. We know that again in the, in the Gospel of Luke, when he finished teaching, the re, he, the, 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 reading the, the, the Torah, he puts it down and says, I am the fulfillment of what Isaiah said. And they were not happy. I am the authority, you see. And he, as the authority, speaks from himself. And here, he uses that authority, that power that he has, to cast out demons. So Mark is showing us the reaction of the people. The people are amazed. And um, news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. And again, just to quickly say something about this demon casting out of an impure spirit. You know, J J Jesus comes to inaugurate the kingdom of God. And one of the things he, he, he's trying to show us is that the kingdom of God, uh, in the kingdom of God, there are no unclean spirits. It, it, the, those are, you know, he's showing us in a sort of seed form what the kingdom of God is like. So all his healings, all his teachings, all his um, the, the exorcism and, and things like that, are all to show us what God's kingdom is like. And so he's, he's, he is enacting the kingdom. Remember, that was, his, that was his original sermon. Repent, the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God has arrived. And, and, and so now he's showing us what the kingdom will look like. In reality, the kingdom will have no unclean spirit. The kingdom will have, will, will, will have him as the highest authority. All right. All right. Let's stop there for tonight. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we give you thanks for the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that we know that when he speaks, he speaks your words, the words of God. 
as Peter says in one place, he has the words of eternal life. When he acts, he acts in the power of God. So Lord, we thank you for the authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who came into this world to show us the, the nature of your kingdom. And so Lord, we pray that we who are grafted into this kingdom, who have become members, citizens of this kingdom, we pray, Lord, that we will bow to this authority, that we will submit to his authority, to his authoritative words, to his authority in, in the things he does in our lives. Lord, we pray that we will submit to him in all that we do, and especially as we come to the close of another day. Lord, give us grace to, to fall on our knees and cry out to him, to let him direct our life, direct our thoughts, direct our words, to let Jesus be central in our lives tonight. And so, Lord, tonight as we seek to rest and sleep, we pray for comfortable sleep tonight. Despite the heat and the, the difficulty that many of us are having sleeping in this heat, we pray, Lord, that you'll help us, uh, that you'll give, give your people comfort and soundness of sleep, we pray. Rest tonight. And as we go to sleep, we pray that you will forgive us all our sins and, Lord, remember us in your mercy. Remember us in your compassion and grace tonight. In the as the darkness fall upon this world, may your light shine in our hearts. And so, Lord, tonight we pray for ourselves, we pray for family, we pray for your children. We pray, Lord, for all the members of our church, especially those who are in pain in some way, especially those who are undergoing medical treatment in any way. We bring them to you tonight. We pray for those who have suffered from this COVID disease, this, those who have suffered the death of a loved one. We pray for comfort for them, for strength for them, and for hope them in the resurrection we pray for those who are, who are who are recovering from covid again we ask Lord, that you will give them your strength during this time may their body heal itself may it repair itself quickly so that they will not have to continue suffering the effects of this disease we pray for those who are suffering because of the unemployment and the recession that this country is now in. Lord, we pray for them. Again, we ask for your, to, for your intervention in their lives. Lord, Lord Jesus, the one who has all the authority, we pray that you will intervene in the lives of those who are suffering tonight in any way and be there for them and give them hope, give them strength, give them your grace sustain them for the future. And so Lord, we all, all of us, commit ourselves to you tonight, commit our lives to you, commit the night, this night to you. And we pray, Lord, that you will uh, give us the rest that we need tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend our spirit for you have redeemed us, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ 
and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's listen to our theme song as we say goodnight for tonight. So may God give you a restful, peaceful, comfortable rest tonight as you sleep. The Lord bless you, sisters and brothers. Good night.